There's a huge process. So this is a state program, and the Department of Historic Resources um, is the one who runs it through the state, and they do all kinds of wonderful things for our state history. This is actually one of the earliest programs. It started long before DHR was even around. 1927, um, Virginia was the first state to have these highway markers, and it was to encourage people with cars to stop and look at history. And actually Route 1 between Richmond and Mount Vernon was the very first stretch of road that had highway signs. So we're adding to that here with our sign. And what I did was kind of gather together all of the people that we needed to talk to, all of the paperwork, and work through DHR. And they are wonderful to work with. So basically we had to come up with the idea. I talked to them about what it was. They need to make sure that it's something that's not just locally important, right? We have all all kinds of wonderful local history here but this story about John Washington is really not just a regional story but a national story and so we talked to them about that and then um, we gathered together a group of folks folks from the James Farmer Center at the University of Mary Washington um, the uh, city offices of both tourism and historic preservation uh, we worked with John Hennessy who's a retired historian at the National Park Service he was the author of this and he you know kind of pulled together all of the the research and then um, we had to figure out where it would go so we got to talk to the owners of the building and figure out exactly where it would be a good site and you know that they wanted to celebrate it because it's certainly right in front of their building so I did all of those things to kind of get everybody together and and put the paperwork in so that we could then finally unveil this wonderful sign yeah, I think what's great about it, you know, this is kind of part of a bigger project that Fredericksburg has been um, doing for a while now, right, to expand the narratives that we have on the landscape, to talk about different aspects of our history. Um, the Civil War is something that um, is pretty prominent in the stories that we talk about, but this is not one that people talk about very much, and so it's super exciting to be able to have this, not just a story that you can get, you know, on a tour or because, you know, you've gone to a particular place, but just walking down the street, people will see this, or coming to Foodie, or you know, just in their everyday life, and really understanding how important it was that not just John Washington, but lots of people used this place to start their own journey to freedom. That's super exciting. And the book is so powerful. It is. It is. I mean, I think there's nothing more powerful than reading something in someone's words, right? And so that's why John Washington is the spark for this, um, because he told us about it, right? He, he wrote it down, and we have the published works and so Fredericksburg can say you know his story started right here everybody who comes to Fredericksburg knows how important those state markers are right they aren't just a story that Fredericksburg wants to tell but they're a story that the state says yeah this has huge importance and it's part of you know everyone's story and you hope that people see it read it and then yeah. do some research on their own absolutely I mean that's the toughest thing I think about these markers and all of us that work in history as we say that's not a lot of words. <laughs> um, it's uh, up to 140 words. So it's really just enough to kind of entice you and want to know more. I mean, it, it is just a sound bite, honestly. And um, I think that people will want to know more. They'll want to find pictures. They'll want to read his book. They'll want to really find out all of the different human stories that, that this sparked. I mean, I'm so excited because I have such wonderful people to work with, you know, such talent that went into crafting this. Um, you know, everybody, uh, people in the city, you know, Department of Public Works was the one that actually has to put it in the ground. Um, you know, uh, for for this highway marker program when it's on a VDOT highway, they do that work. But because we wanted it in the city, our actual city employees had to put the concrete and put the sign up. So, you know, everybody across the city has been a part of this and it's super exciting to, you know, to just have a little bit of a hand in it. Um, I'm a professor, um, I'm an associate professor of historic preservation at UMW and relatively new to Fredericksburg, honestly, and have gotten really into the local history. That's what we do in the historic preservation department. We are all super involved in in all of the great things that are going on in the city and we all help out in multiple committees and things. Um, one of the, the things that I'm most interested in is actually expanding the narratives that we have. So I teach a class called Diversity and Preservation um, where we look at what has been preserved and the narratives we have and kind of thinking about ways that we might um, kind of expand on that and, um, and find new stories and really be more inclusive in the kinds of things that we talk about. And so um, my students in kind of the bigger project have, have been able to participate in that. They've, um, they did some 
preliminary research that contributed to the civil rights tour. So um, what I do at um, UMW is really um, teach students about how preservation is part of their environment, whether they want to go on to be professional preservationists or whether they just take my intro class because you know they have to check a general education <laughs> yeah. box right and they say and I often hear from students saying I didn't think I would think this is so interesting but I love this this is really great and I say that's fantastic you know go out and be a business major go out and be a psychology major but know what your environment contributes to your everyday life, to everybody's everyday life, and how these stories matter. Um, and so, you know, hopefully, when they when they graduate and they go out into um, their careers, they'll stop and read signs and uh, and share them and think about them and and learn the history of wherever they are. And in this case, you can see it. The fact that this building has been preserved. Yeah. What a powerful story this tells because it's here and it's, it's not just on a street corner. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, that's the power of preservation, right? Uh, is that it's place based history. So it's telling a story as close as possible to where it happened and looking at hopefully something that's been saved um, from that time so that you can see the spaces, you can kind of imagine what happened there and really kind of um, get a deeper understanding. There's a connection that we have when we enter old places, when we see see yeah. artifacts of history that really connects in a different way than just reading about it. So getting all of those senses together is what it's about.